This is Future Tech, where each week we discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly of where tech is headed in 2023 and beyond. AI continues to be the biggest story, and we have a lot to break down for you this week. Our fearless leader over at Gizmodo, Dave Ewalt, joins us now to break down some of the things that we've seen this past week. Notably, some of the top leaders in tech and AI actually published some sort of open letter, right, saying, can we just calm down on the AI for now? What more can you tell us? So there's a group called the Future of Life Institute, and they are very focused on development of AI and issues related to this. They put out an open letter this week signed by more than 500 at this point, uh, different tech luminaries, you know, real engineering experts, people like Steve Wozniak, uh, Elon Musk also signed it, um, a bunch of MIT people. So it's very thoughtful people who know a lot about this area of technology and they're expressing some concern that we're moving too fast in the development of AI and suggesting that we slow down. It seems like they've been kind of can't stop, won't stop, right? The folks in the AI world. Uh, let's see if uh, that temporary moratorium actually does work. But um, in that letter, I think they even use the quote, uh, potential like risks to society. I mean, what are some of the concerns? Yeah, so here's the thing. When we talk about risks from AI, people automatically go to Terminator, right? They're like, oh, we're creating Skynet, AI is gonna kill all of us puny humans. And I don't think anybody really takes that scenario too seriously. What they're really talking about is the fact that we're creating these tools that we really don't understand yet, and we don't understand the consequences. So for instance, are we creating automations for things that are going to take all of our jobs away? Not just the small jobs nobody cares about, but like, are we doing these tools so fast that 10 years from now, we're gonna find out we've completely destroyed our economy because now 50% of the population doesn't have jobs because AI does them. They're also very worried about disinformation and propaganda. And that's some of what we've already seen already with these AI is that it's very easy to make fake videos, fake pictures. Yeah, I mean, definitely some real concerns there. I mean, the AI, some of the images and videos can be fun though. And then, you know, some can be a bit damaging. I, I mean, we saw what we saw the Pope recently mm -hmm. sporting some sort of like uh, dapper white puffer coat. Yeah, you know, they're funny and they're, it's amazing what these AIs can produce. That one you're referring to of the Pope in the big white puffer coat went super viral because it was really funny and because it looked completely real. Everyone was like, oh look, the, the Pope wears this awesome jacket. It was totally fake though. And that was a harmless example of everybody falling for one of these fake images, but the fact that you can now create those sort of things as fast as you could, can now, it doesn't take a lot of Photoshop, doesn't take a ton of time, or the videos too, when suddenly there could be a news event and someone says, hey, look at this video from this shooting or from the president's speech backstage, what he said, the fact that you can produce fake content as quickly and as accurately as these AIs do, that's what's really got people worried. Right, I mean, a lot of us already have trust issues mm -hmm. <laughs> just in general. And, and now that apparently the AI is getting better at doing hands, I think that was kind of a, a you know, a sign that it, that it was generated artificially mm -hmm. and it, it's, getting, it's getting better, but regulations on the table, I guess. Yeah, I mean, over the past couple of years, just being involved in journalism, I've been in, in working groups where we've looked at things like, well, we've got a news clip coming in, how do we know this isn't created by AI? And it's very rapidly, just in the past two years, gone from, oh, here's an obvious problem. The person depicted has six fingers or ears were something that was often wrong on AI created stuff. Um, to now, it's very, very difficult to tell. So people are talking about, well, maybe we need to regulate this. Because we've seen, of course, um, throughout our journalism careers, doctored, vi doctored you know, videos that have been mm -hmm. um, touched. And, you know, like I know Project Veritas and other companies have been famous for kind of bits and piecing um, videos together. But yeah, I mean, AI, you can't as easily decipher whether something is real or not. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder to tell what's real and what's not. And, you know, at the rate we're moving, I was about to say give it another three to five years, but at this point it's like give it another <laughs> Isn't this all a sim, three Dave? to five months. Is this a simulation? We're totally. All just we are definitely it. living in a simulation <laughs> and you know the technology is going to increase to the point where whoever's playing this sim decides to hit us all with a massive hurricane and burn down our city. So let's do what we can to stay alive until the gamer gets bored. Well, in the meantime, we'll hopefully um, play the game fair. Uh, Dave Ewalt, thank you so much for that. And for more on AI and the simulation that we're all living in, check out gizmodo.com. Thank you.